this is Lady B, and this week I wanted to share with you some updos and buns for long hair. Now, I apologize for the noise. It's over 110 degrees outside right now, and the air conditioner is running, of course. So I will try to speak up so that you can hear me over the sound of the air conditioning. How I started doing this, putting my hair up in a bun, was because I was 24 and my work had me running around all day. I was just go, go, go all day and by the end of the day my hair looked terrible. And I tried different hairstyles. I did long hairstyles, I did short hairstyles. It didn't matter what the hairstyle was. It looked terrible by the end of the day, which is very frustrating when you're trying to look pro professional. It all changed one day when I was at the store and I noticed by the checkout there was this band. It was a pack of three of these velvet bands about so big and they had a wire running around the outside and a slit in the middle that you could pull your hair through to twist your hair up into a bun. And I thought, I have nothing to lose, I'm going to give it a try. And I discovered for the first time that if I put my hair up in a bun, in some type of coif or whatever you want to call it, by the end of the day, my hair would look just as good as it did at the beginning of the day. And I could finish my day's work looking just as put together as when I started. And that was where I started. And even today, when people ask me, where do I start if I want to start putting my hair up in a bun, I tell them, start with one of these assistants, one of these tools that will help you put your hair up in a simple fashion while getting you used to working with it in that way. It's, it's a great starter if you have never done it before. Now, out of all the different things I tried, my favorite is the Harigami. And it is basically, if you're familiar with slap bracelets, they were very popular a few years ago, it's basically that same thing. It's a slap bracelet, two of them, sandwiched between velvet so that it will cling to your hair, just like the, the first things I tried were also the velvet. And these, you sandwich your hair in between this and you pop it and roll it. And with these, you can make all kinds of styles. But I wanted to share with you my favorite hairstyle I did or used to do all the time with these. But unfortunately, I can't do it in my hair anymore. It's My hair is too long. Um, and I know people who say they've got really, really long hair and they still manage to use these. I have hair past my waist now and I find it's very difficult to use. But my niece has the right length hair and she has agreed to help me demonstrate. So I'm going to show you my favorite one I've done with these. So this is my niece, Miss Fawn. <laughs> you can turn and look at the camera. Hi. <laughs> there you go. And I have started already. I've parted her hair. All I've done is take it from behind up by the ear up to the top of the head to split her hair into two even amounts. And I'm going to take my first, this takes two of these. It takes two harigamis. And you snap it open. Now I've never done this on her hair so it may take a couple of attempts. But basically, as I said, we sandwich the hair between it, and then you pull straight back. And then we roll it up. And you smooth as you go if you need to. It doesn't hurt to have a little water on hand just to smooth out any stray hairs. And as I come to it, oh, I got that right, excellent. So you can see here how I have it going across the entire thing. And then I just snap it and I curl it in and curl it like that. And this gives us that twisted bun. Now I can get this really tight and small, but for the style I'm doing, this is all I want right now. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to go under the opposite direction I did the first time. Pull it straight out, and I'm going to turn it this way. Make sure and keep this nice. Those are shorter hairs. Yep, they're shorter hairs. When you have shorter hairs, you just tuck it in as you go to make sure it's up and in. Okay, so I'm going to, this is the open end. This is my closed end. I'm going to start twisting in the closed end. Now I'm going to take this open end here and I'm going to grab this end here and I'm going to tuck the end of this one into this. And then I slide the hair up so that it connects the two. And this creates this S shape. So for here, all the way down and around. This is called a serpentine. And it looks so pretty in the back. Would you like to see what it looks like in the back? Mm -hmm. Let me hold that up so you can see. Mm. It looks so pretty in the back. And it's so easy to do. And this will stay all day. So when I wanted to do something that was a little prettier, a little more formal, this was my go-to. I just love this style. You need two of the bracelets, bracelets, two of the harigamis, and it's just that fast, and you've got this gorgeous hairstyle. Chronologically, the second bun I learned how to do is actually the French twist. And I used to get people ask me all the time how I did it. They all assumed it must be incredibly difficult. And they wouldn't believe me when I would actually tell them it's really easy to do. But it is. It's incredibly simple as long as you have a French pin. Now, if you're not familiar with French pins, this is what they look like. This is a bone one. Uh, the thing that makes the French pin a French pin is it's got this, this uh, loop at the top here. Then it dips in and then it flanges back out again or spreads. And these bone ones are really pretty, but they're actually decorative only. They, they break really easily, so you can't put in a lot of pressure on them. But I have a set if I ever want to use them decoratively where I just add it into an already made French twist. Your other two options are your other two options are metal and plastic. The metal ones are now you can find them. It used to be you could not find them at least here in the United States. Maybe different in other countries. Um, here what you could find was these, which is what I have, and they're the plastic ones. And you'll notice it has that same shape. It has the the loop at the top, then it comes in and then it spreads back out. The thing is, is these plastic ones, if you do buy a plastic one, make sure you get ones like this that are that reinforced. It has that extra bar here, because otherwise the plastic ones will also break. They are no stronger than the bone. So metal or plastic, if you get plastic, it's reinforced. Get the ones that are reinforced. So, so very, very, very easy to do. You pull your hair to the base of your neck. Or you can actually do it up here. I used to do both, depending on the look I wanted. They both work, they do give you a slightly different look. But the, traditionally it started down here at the base of the neck. So you're just going to start to twist. And we want to twist it, I like to twist it to the right. It works either way, that's just the way I like to do it. But I'm twisting it to the right, and then after I have it twisted a good length, I pull it up while continuing to twist. And you can see how the hair pulls over and just comes in and covers that. Now, once you've got it, once you have the bun up 
as high as you want it. You're going to grab the top and continuing to twist this. You're going to pull that down and you're going to tuck it in along with all that hair that has pulled over. I've got a little bit here. What do you do with it? You just twist it again, pull it back up, tuck it in. So all your hair is tucked out of the way. Once you have this just beautifully brought in, both tucked in and then pulled over, you start putting in your pins. If you'll notice, the pins are curved. You want to put them in with the curve pointing away from your head. And you put your first one in the top here. As you pull this over, there's this little bit of hair that's swirling the top here. You grab and you hold that to make sure that it doesn't go too far. Then you push it into that little loop at the top, pull it all the way over. So you've got my pins here, snug against the head, bring it over and push it in. And that is going to make it snug. Now, continuing to tuck as we go, we go down the line doing the same thing. We grab, curve out away from the head, into it, against the scalp, push in. And that should be the last one. I find it takes about five. You can, sometimes it will take six, sometimes it will take four, but you really only need about five. There we go. I want to turn so they can see that. Now, you'll notice this is to the side. If you want it to be right in the middle, you actually have to bring it to the side slightly of the way you're twisting. I twisted this to the right, so I would have needed to actually start twisting it slightly to the right here if I wanted it to go straight up. But it all depends on you and how you like it. So that's the back. You like that? Side that you saw already where you can see that beautiful push in from the front. You see how we just have this lovely pull back from the hair? And then from the other side where you just have this nice smooth surface here. So very, very easy to do. And it, it does not take much practice. It's just a twist and a pin. Just make sure you use the right pins. Now, this next bun is one that I tend to use mostly in the summer. And for it, I recommend the use of spin pins. They are literally a spiral pin that you spin to put in your hair. And the reason is, is because this bun is done at the nape of the neck and I have found that these hold the best for styles like that. So let me show you how it's done. This particular bun starts the exact same way that you start the fence twist. You're going to gather your hair at the base of your neck and then you're going to start to twist. Now, just like with the French twist, if you wanted it to go in the center, you needed to move it here onto this side. In the case of this one, because I want it to be in the center, I need to move it the opposite direction. So where with the French twist, you might start it here, I'm starting this one here. The opposite of which way I twist. So I'm twisting to the right, so I moved it slightly to the left. And the reason is, is because now once I start doing this, it moves it to the center. If I don't do that, it will be offset. And that's just a little trick you pick up as you go. And I'm just going to twist it around. It's much the same as the messy bun I showed in the earlier video. I've had a lot of people ask me how to do this though, and the secret is, is you just keep pulling it underneath the previous layer. And you tuck those ends. So now I have this kind of thing sticking out. I'm going to grab the top, the very first loop ever made, and I'm going to pull it wide. 
I'm, I'm going to let it come loose and I'm going to tuck it down over these twists that were in underneath it. And that helps lock it in place. Then I'm going to take three spin pins. Now you can do this with two if you have less hairs than I do, putting one down and one up. But because I have as much hair as I do, I do one at the top here. And then up on either side. Spin pins are another thing that is incredibly easy to use. So you need to see I now have this spiral bun at the base of my neck, which can be very formal or even very casual if you want. Now I actually wear this one casually. And the reason I started wearing my hair like this is because I love hats. And the advantage of this low bun is I can put a hat on with it. So in the summer when it gets hot and I'd like to wear a hat to keep myself cool or at least keep the sun off my head, this is the bun I'll wear right there. Now I almost forgot to mention that if you do not intend to wear it with a hat, you do not need the spin pins. You have other options that you can use to hold it in place. In the case of the hair sticks, what you would do is take one of your sticks, come in at this angle, push it through the outer loop, just on the inside, to the scalp, push it over, push it through, lock. And then do the same thing on the other side. Catching the outer side, but on the inside of the outer loop, all the way to the scalp so that it's clear over here. Push against the scalp, to push back, and then pull it through, and bring it back through to the inside there. And that's your crossed hair sticks. You can instead use a hair fork where you come in on one side, again catching the outer loop all the way to the outside so it's here against my skin, pushing against the skin, catching the hair underneath the whole thing all the way to the other side, catching the outer edge of that other outer loop and there's your hair fork. So this is a multiple, something you can do multiple ways, hold it in multiple ways. Easy to do, base of the neck. The next hairstyle I started using is a figure eight or infinity bun, depending on how you put it in. Where you're going to, in this case, pull your hair up to just below the crown, and you're going to, again, slightly to the, I'm twisting to the right, so I want to start slightly to the left, going to start twisting. And I'm going to do it as if I was putting it in the same bun I put down here. Now the difference is, in this case, instead of grabbing this outer one and pulling it over my lower, the lower ones, I'm actually going to pull it away. And I'm going to use this one, the next loop, to push over the lower ones, creating this figure eight, like that. Now when it's like this, it's called the infinity, where it's laying on its side. And for this one, you want a hair fork. We've got the hair fork. And just like before below, you're going to stick it through all the way against the scalp, underneath all the bun, push it up, and that holds it beautifully solid. This can also be done down here if you want but usually it's done up here, and this is how I would wear it. The other option is, instead of a hair fork, you need a hair comb, and this is where it's called the figure eight. Once again, twisting it, I want to pull it so that this is to the top, here. Now when I say I twist it to the top, I mean I'm turning it 
so that the base of that first loop is at the very bottom here, is here. And I twist it so it's under like this. Now I'm going to take this again, take this, but instead of pulling it to the side, I'm going to pull it down. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, only now it's going to be vertical. And now I take my comb, stick it in the top again. Let me show you, push toward the head, up, push down, all the way down until it catches through the bottom there. And this is a very formal look. I would wear this to special occasions or to church. But you do have to have, you can tell, you have to have that really long teeth on the comb. You can see how long that is from here's where they're sticking out here, and there's the top. So it's like, what, six inches? It requires a really, really, really long teeth on that comb. So this next one is a hairstyle I wear in the summer when I'm not wearing a hat. It's nice and casual, goes well with casual clothing, and it gets my hair up off the back of my neck so that I don't have to deal with the sweat and everything from the heat. And it unfortunately involves the use of the dreaded hairband, which I don't like, but it's the only way to do it that I've found. So I start it by putting my hair up in a ponytail. Now, these hair band can go around my hair three times, so I do it twice. And then on the third time, I don't pull it through very far. I just make a little bump like this. And then I have a hair stick that I just shove through. Now, again with the twist. There's two ways to do this. You can actually braid this at this point if you want, but usually I just do the twist. So I start by twisting it, making sure to hold it in the back so it doesn't turn my bun. And I twist, and then just like before, I tuck underneath the previous twist. At this point, you can use bobby pins. I use spin pins. I like them because they hold nice and tight. The other advantage of the spin pin is what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop one of these in the back here and I'm going to make sure not only to catch the hair on my scalp, let's turn around so you can see this. So I put it in so it not only catches the hair on the scalp, but you'll notice I have my finger in here. And it's in here so that I can push down the elastic so I can catch the elastic in my spin pin too and then push it through to the front so that it goes all the way through. And then I'm going to put the other two in the front. Now, you can do this with just two, one going back and one going forward. You can use as many bobby pins as you want. I like to use three just because of how much hair I have. You may not need to. But again, I'm going to come in here with my finger. I'm going to push down on the band, put my spin pin through, and then make, use that finger to make sure that I catch that band as I push the spin pin in and secure it. Sometimes it takes, up oh, there, I got it. Sometimes it takes two or three tries before I catch it. All right, now the reason I left this in here is I now take my fingers through where it is. I use it to guide my fingers so I know that they're going in the loop. Pull that out and I'm just going to pull this tight. And I call this a shell button because I think it looks like I just now have a giant shell on the top of my head. And it's a little silly and it's very casual and it looks great with my white capris and my peach shirt and it's very summery. I wanted to end with a formal style, something you could use when you wanted to go somewhere really nice and you wanted it your hair to look really pretty. 
I know I said I can't do a French twist anymore with my hair, but I would like to call this a half French because it starts the same way you do a French twist. I'm going to start it slightly to the right because I am twisting it to the right. So I'm twisting my hair, pulling it up, pulling the hair up over it to get that nice French twist. And once I have it looking how I want, I am going to start by putting my French pins in. Again, it curves this way. They curve up, so I want to curve it away from my head. And the very first one I put in, I want to make sure and catch the top of this part that has been tucked. So I'm going to take it Tip my head so you can see. Catch the top of that. And then through there, all the way to my scalp, push and tuck. And now that I have that first one in, I can start going down again so that the curved part is away from the head, through the bun, all the way to the scalp so it's clear over here push and in. So I still have all of this. So the question then becomes what to do with it. Now I find it takes about three for me. If your hair is thicker it might take more, thinner it might take less, but I'm going to break this into three even parts, each one about the width of my pinky. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to twist and I'm going to create a little bun. And then I'm going to pin this one to the right here. Now you can either use spin pins, or you can use bobby pins, or you can use ballet pins. That's what these are. I've done the spin pins, and it works okay, but it would probably be better if you did use spin pins, if you used mini pins. I'm going to be honest, I think those ballet pins are too long. I'm going to get my bobby pins. I'm going to assume most of you know this, but I didn't growing up because my mother had very, very, very fine and thin hair. So for her, bobby pins didn't work the same as they did for me. She, she would use them by spreading the bobby pin open like this. You can see if I, if I can focus there. She'd spread it open and then slide her hair in it which worked for her hair because it was very fine. This does not work for mine. It is not how they actually are meant to work. They work based on the tension of this clamp here. So the reason that your bobby pin has this little bit coming up like this is because it creates this angle here. And you are actually supposed to put this you put it in your hair on this angle so that that little bit touches your scalp so it comes in on this angle. So I put it in on this angle going through my hair and it automatically will catch my hair and I touch the top of my head with both of those ends and then again I torque it and just slide and it holds. And I'm going to put in two so that they're crossed. And as long as you remember to put it on in, the, in on that angle so that those two ends touch your scalp at the same time and then push and torque, get that little bit of torque there, they will hold. Let's see if I can get it where you can see better. I don't know how well you can see back here. But you've got the three buns up here, French twist here. It's a very formal style something you'd wear to a special occasion. So there we go. And that's it. Those are the updos for long hair that I use for my own hair that I wanted to share. And there you have it. Updos for long and extra long hair from myself and with the assistance of Miss Fawn. Now, I love you all whether new or old.
If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Until then, whether fancying up your hair or just getting it out of your way or anything else you may do this week, just remember, don't be afraid to suit yourself and make whatever it is you do exclusively you. which I'm having trouble with this one. There we go. Nope, missed it again. I closed the vent to try and keep the noise down and it is getting hot in here. <laughs> Ow, I hit my toe. <laughs> that really hurt. I am flushed. It was in your stomach. <laughs> I'm hungry. I know. <laughs>